Red Edition, welcome. Happy day, North Carolina. They say, hey, we're running out of money now. All of you people that over the years we've told you not to use gasoline, let's be green and hug trees and everything you're doing it now. And our tax revenue is down, so now we're going to tax you for your electric cars. You kind of can't get away from that old consumption thing with governments, you know, and now they have registration fees, and they're always looking for ways to get more money from you. Instead of making the spending easier and better, a graduation in Cleveland, Ohio. This is just so weird. <laughs> a whole bunch of people got into an argument. They started fighting. Seven adults and one teenager were convicted or charged, I should say, for aggravated rioting. That's kind of an interesting term. It was a joyous day for little scholars. They were graduating that day, and all the relatives who's got into a scrap, a <laughs> stupid relative file. That's what this would be from. I mean, what's wrong with these people? Liberal leader in Canada, Justin Trudeau, he now welcomes the embattled Senator Mark Harb back into the party. Get your problems cleaned up. This is a guy that was convicted or charged, I should say, and had, has admitted pretty much the same as being convicted, that he stole $235,000 from the Canadian taxpayer, and now Trudeau is saying, hey, it's just a misunderstanding of the rules. You all come back when you're ready. You know, you know that Trudeau, I think he only opens his mouth to uh, change feet. <laughs> Socialist um, letter. Got the, My mother got this letter the other day. My mother is right wing of John Wayne. Where did I get it from? She's a capitalist. She tells people she's a capitalist. She's 85 years old and going strong and she believes in free enterprise and cha, cha, cha. And she got this letter. Somebody got their email addresses mixed up. Dear Jean, I can promise you one thing. This is coming from the NDP party in Canada, and that would be New Democratic, which is short for socialist slash communist, okay? I can promise you one thing, so says the letter. It's kind of cute. If you make a donation to Canada's New Democrats, we will never appoint you to the Senate. <laughs> Unlike Stephen Harper, who was appointed 51 of his favorite conservative donors, unelected, unaccountable senators, that's why we're fighting to abolish the Senate. Justin Trudeau, the liberal leader, he's defending liberal senators and he wants to welcome them back with open arms, as I just said earlier, while liberals and conservatives uh, like the Senate, <laughs> the new Democrat team are the only ones that put Canadians first. Ah, you know what the bad news is? I agree with all that. These are bad people. They just can't connect lives, life's dots, you know. <laughs> they're kind of crazy. And, and they're doing what the right-wing party should be doing. Something's kind of wrong here. Ooh, you talk about a mix-up in life. But anyway, they're going to get votes because of that's all your right-wing I don't know that there are any of you left, but any of you who think or your cards say that you're supposed to be right-wing politicians in Canada, come out of the ether, will you? Wake up. And if you do, by the way, wake up and make a stand. I'll bark like a fox because it'll be kind of hard to believe. Now, back to Justin Trudeau. He's a liberal leader, right? He says that I'm going to give the money back now that I paid or I received for speaking engagements from taxpayer-funded travel and all of this stuff. It just never ends. There are a whole bunch of corrupt scoundrels. What you need in Canada and every country in the world is term limits, and you need to put the with no pensions. And these people need to go back out, eat what you kill kind of a philosophy, need to go back out into what they created. In other words, um, you make the bed, you have to lie in it, right? The Romans did that thousands of years ago. The bridge builders, they, you know, the, the leaders said, build these bridges, we're going to take all of our troops across and we're going to fight a war. Guess who the first people were that had to go across the bridge? You know it. That would be the bridge builders. you got to kind of go along with what you build. Could any of these politicians live in the world that they're creating for us, for the peasantry? Not a chance, because they're just elite scoundrels. There's a bill now that's going to make it a, a, a crime to annoy a cop. <laughs> this is out of Albany, New York. So if you harass, annoy, or threaten a police officer while he's on duty, you're going to, you know, be charged. Kind of thought that already existed. Typical liberal stuff. Let's create a law to say that the other law is really a law. <laughs> That's kind of what they do. I'm always reminded of Jesse Jackson. I saw him on television years ago with then state governor out of Texas, George W. Bush. And he said, you need a law that you can't murder black people. Bush looked at him and he said, but we have a law now that says you can't murder anybody. Doesn't matter what color you are, Jesse. I want a law that says black people. Okay, should we have one that says you can't do these other people too? You know, Orientals, blah, blah, blah. he went through a list. And Jackson said, yes, that's liberalism. Let's have a whole bunch of laws and create enough confusion that everybody will give up. Islamist activists who work for the Obama administration are Muslim Brotherhood operatives who uh, enjoy strong influence over U.S. policy. Is it true? Does it matter? 
There's a list of names. Here you have the Assistant Secretary for the Policy Development for the U.S. Department of Homeland Security. You, uh, his name is uh, Arif something, I can't pronounce things. You have a Mohammed something who's the Homeland Security Advisor. You have a Rasad something that's a special envoy to the Organization of the, of the Islamic Conference. And there's a long list here. You have an Advisory Council on Faith-Based Neighborhood Partnerships, Ebo Patel. A little scary if all of this is true. Is it true? Our sources say it is. Would you all check it out, please? And kind of see what you come up with and see how you feel. Let me end today with a story. Lighten up a little bit. Ladies, this is for you. All you women, are you listening to me? Listen to me. Ladies, if a man says he will fix it, he will. There's no need to remind him every six months. <laughs> hey, y'all, come back tomorrow. Get a more for you from the right. See ya. <laughs>